Welcome back, everybody. We've got some more EA College football news right now. Now, all the news I'm about to give you stems from an article by Brandon Marcello over at 247 Sports. I'll leave a link to the article down in the description, so please go check it out for yourself. Read through the whole thing because I'm only going to gloss over a lot of it. Now, I like the first line of this article, which reads, EA Sports wants to get it right the first time, the second time around. <laughs> and we are begging them to do that. The article goes on to say that information has been scarce since they announced it in February of 2021, which is true. We've had little leaks here and there trickle out just from like open information requests, schools about their fight songs and whatnot, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, they may have announced it in February of 2021, but they've been working on this thing for three years. It may sound like a lot of time, but it's not when you're looking at the monster that is college sports. We're still looking at July of 2023, and if this article is to be believed, the time-consuming process of acquiring photo, video, and audio assets from 130-plus FBS schools to guide game designers is winding down. And it also mentions that the on-air talent from ESPN are in the process of recording commentary for the game. So I'm guessing Herb Street, maybe we'll get some Fowler. Is Corso going to be able to do anything? Uh, probably not. It's a shame we can't get different broadcasters at some point. I mean, maybe they could down the road years away from now. Because I'd love to hear Gus Johnson. That excitement he brings to the commentary. Orton Schlager to the sideline. Caught first down. Woo! What a hit! Denzel Ward! You got barbecue back there? And you didn't invite me? Hurt my feelings! And the article also goes on to say the biggest hurdle on the horizon is the monstrous task of securing the name, image, and likeness rights of hundreds of players as EA Sports leans into making the game as realistic as possible. Nil has been the thing that comes up anytime anybody talks about the new EA College football game. We have so many questions and we have no answers. <laughs> Well, we kind of have answers. Let's read more. The article poses the question, what happens if only a small fraction of players agree to be part of the game? Then I don't think that's going to be a concern. If you ask anyone in college sports if they wanted to be part of EA College Football, if they didn't get paid, there might be a handful that say no. And it's kind of confirmed with the poll that's mentioned in this article, which says the good news for those clamoring to play as their favorite player is that many college players are just as big, if not bigger fans of the defunct NCAA football franchise. An informal poll of more than two dozen players conducted by 24 seven sports revealed an overwhelming desire to be included in the game. Money was an issue only for one player polled. One, are you that one? Are you watching this right now? Look, I'll pay you. We scroll down a little bit, and I think Mike Jones from LSU said it best. We would stay up all night playing the game, and I did that for years. That's a part of my childhood. So when the game was discontinued, that hurt, man. I love the game. Yes. And then we got stuck with Madden until the birth of college football revamp brought a lot of us back. Some of us still playing it. I read some guys in like year 50 in their dynasty. That's crazy. Though we made it to year 20 last year in Madden somehow. Don't ask. Now I'm going to read this section of the article because I find it really interesting that there are some nil companies that are kind of courting EA to be the provider of the group rights. Several companies entered the group licensing arena before nil laws for college athletes were instituted across the country in 2021. In a way, they were preparing for the inevitable return of the popular video game. Open Doors, a nil company launched in 2012, has built a large database of college and professional athletes on its marketplace platform. The company helps match players with individual and group nil deals and also provides nil education and data. In June 2021, the company partnered with a company specializing in group licenses to strengthen its position in the nil market as it aims to become EA Sports' primary provider of group rights. Another company, One Team, has previously helped secure group licensing deals with EA Sports and professional sports, and recently launched group licensing opportunities for college athletes to earn money on jersey and t-shirt sales and trading cards. The big fish in collegiate space is the fight to become EA Sports' partner. Then we got a quote from uh, Eric Winston from One Team who says, that's what everyone is really talking about and thinking about. We obviously want to work with them. Look, hire me, EA. I want to work with you. I'll do some mocap cleanup or something for you. If it's college football, I won't work on the Madden. I want college football. It's in my blood. Just a correction here. One team has a partnership with Open Doors, which Winston would go on to say that he believes that partnership would provide EA Sports with access to every player eligible to appear in the game. And then he said the decision that will have to be made is whether the athletes want to be part of it. And that's the question, right? Is the pot sweet enough for everybody to sign in? Because reading more, it says player payouts are not expected to be huge and most deals will be four figures. A person familiar with the process said four figures, not that much. Would that be enough to get you in the game? If you're that one person that you know, that handful that were pulled is four figures. Let's say, let's go to the top end of it. Is nine grand enough? Is one grand enough? Think about that. If you're a backup or you're a third stringer, I'm taking that grand. 
and I'm playing as myself. Now we've even got Winston saying here, licensing is not the pot at the end of the rainbow. There have been other folks in the marketplace who have indicated that, and that's just not something that we've ever seen on the pro level or seen anywhere else. So why would it happen in college? It's not, it's not gonna happen. The EA hasn't done anything yet. It goes on to say that they've continued to monitor the evolution of NIL and whether Congress or the NCAA will provide further guidance on rules and legislation. Industry insiders expected EA Sports to finalize a partnership with a NIL group this summer. We're at the end of the summer. Shit or get off the pot. It's time to make a move. Now let's move on to an interesting tidbit about rosters. You know, with nil not finalized yet, they don't need anything to be finalized. They can keep adding things all the way up until early to mid-June. That's when they're looking at having the initial roster in the game. But here's the interesting part. Let's read, shall we? EA is also expected to update rosters via downloadable updates for the game from July 2023 through July 2024, though the frequency of those updates is unclear. You mean we won't have to rely on Operation Sports to give us rosters every year? I love you, Operation Sports, but it would be nice if the rosters were just there. We could save some man hours and focus in on something else. I don't know about you, once I start my dynasty, I'm not restarting it because they're getting monthly roster updates, but it would be cool for just like plain hour, online head to head, stuff like that. Let's hit another roster point here. 24 seven asks, how will EA Sports handle the roster if a team's star quarterback refuses to be in the game? Developers are still discussing options. Possibilities include creating a fictitious player with as few connections as possible to the real world starter to avoid litigation, of course, or simply elevating the real world back up to starter. A decision on whether to allow customers to edit rosters is also a point of contention and potentially litigious. So we might not have the ability to edit rosters at all when this comes out. Wouldn't that be interesting? I can't remember the last EA football game where we could not edit the rosters. People will find a way. And this is a good point right here. Unlike Madden, it's impossible to acquire real life photo scans of hundreds of college players located across the country. So designers are expected to create players resembling the likeness of real world counterparts. I hope they're putting in a lot of work. I hope they are photo scanning random people off the streets to just have a look of a football player because let's be honest, the faces you could select in Madden over the years, not much variety there. If I see the same five faces over and over and over again, I don't need to say anything. And this actually worries me right here. Meanwhile, it's a mad dash to the finish line for the developer. I don't like anything that sounds like something's being rushed. The EA was still attempting in July to secure assets from FBS schools to guide its stadium designs for the game, according to emails obtained by 24-7 Sports in an open records request at Arkansas State University. EA Sports began requesting photos of stadiums and uniforms and audio of chants, band songs, and cheers in early 2021. EA also requested schools to provide audio files along with the timing of songs and cheers during games in a spreadsheet. And EA was quoted in one of, the, one of those emails as saying, stadiums are our most complex, costly, and time-intensive assets to build. So we are starting with those first. I mean, that's kind of good news. You need that atmosphere. That stadium atmosphere is right up there with top of the pile stuff that you want in a college football game. Now it seems 24 seven sports does have a source because this quote right here said, we're not putting finishing touches on things. So there is a bit of hesitation to speak right now because you don't want to put your foot in your mouth. Hence why we're not hearing anything about EA college football. And plus we got the launch of Madden. They're building the hype machine for Madden. They're gonna be pushing Madden hard for the next few months. I know a lot of people on one of my other videos suggested that maybe they drop a trailer or some kind of you know a little teaser during bowl games or national title game or maybe right after the title game somebody said super bowl and no way in hell they're doing that if you ask me because that's too much money to get a commercial spot there so we'll see i think we do see something now that we're getting close to college football i know my initial thing was i don't think we're gonna see anything until like april or something of next year i think i said but i think we're gonna see something a small tiny little teaser maybe just a screenshot and that is enough to get people going. Now let's move on to the next bullet point, And that is that EA College Football 24 is built on the Madden engine, but we should expect tweaks to that engine to make it feel like college football, which is what they did previously back on the Infinity engine, I think it was. College football usually played a little faster. And honestly, they're gonna have to because Madden uses next-gen stats to inform a lot of their speed and player movement in that game. I don't know how they use that for college football. So I'm very curious to see how it plays. I hope it's not just like this engine, but we're reverting back to the player movement of before next-gen player movement. Cause I'm a big fan of next-gen player movement. I know a lot of people did not like it at first and then some got warmed up to it and some people still hate it, but I like it. Now this next paragraph is pretty encouraging. So I'm gonna read the whole thing here. The game design, atmosphere, and unique traditions for each school is primarily what EA Sports will lean into for the game. With that said, the game isn't simply a reskin of Madden. Thank you. 
the playbook will be much more robust and team specific too. Thank you. Remember, the NCAA football franchise, not Madden, was the first to introduce RPO plays in the 2013 version of the game. The team at EA Sports is taking great care in making sure the presentation is uniquely collegiate, which is why the team has spent so much time designing stadiums and implementing assets to differentiate game day atmospheres from school to school. What separated the NCAA football and Madden franchises was the almost romantic focus on the pageantry of college football traditions, and that will continue in the college football franchise. Cue the hallelujah music. And I like this quote, Madden is fun, but college football is just different. There's so many different environments, so many different types of players. There's nothing like it. Nothing. Now the next section of the article goes over the cover art and who might be there, whether it's gonna be some of the Heisman winners from the years that we missed from 2014, 2013 to now, or if it's gonna be a current guy that's in the Heisman running, like a Bryce Young or a CJ Stroud or a Caleb Williams or Jordan Addison. I don't know. Personally, I don't really care. Just don't put a Wolverine on the cover because I'm sick to my stomach that the last one that we got had Denard Robinson on it. Ah, thank God for custom covers. They also go on to talk about whether the Madden curse would trickle down the college football and whether some of these players might balk at the idea of being at the cover. Bama boy Will Anderson <laughs> was like, no, nah, don't put me on the cover. And what he really said was, oh no, I heard that's bad luck. I don't blame him. A little side note here, 16 of the 22 featured on the cover of Madden games have had their ensuing season cut short due to injuries or off-field issues, which is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now, I might bump this to the front of the video because this is what a lot of us here really want to know. So if I did, here's the good news. Several fan favorite features expected to return. And they are Dynasty and Road to Glory, which I'm going to be dropping a Road to Glory series soon here, and it's unique. But the interesting part is this. More modes could be added via downloadable content updates in the fall, winter, and spring. They're not done. That means legends from college football's past could be included in future updates for an ultimate team mode. Oh, no. Though that hasn't yet taken shape at EA. Oh, yes. Let's read that line again, shall we? That means legends from college football's past could be included in future updates for an ultimate team mode, though that hasn't yet taken shape at EA. There's no ultimate team in the game right now, but a bunch of exciting gifts here. All right, everybody take a deep breath. Let that flow through you a little bit. Thank God. I fully expected it to be in the game and it will be eventually, but this tells you at least that their focus is on Dynasty and Road to Glory. College football fans rejoice. Let's hit the next one. Throwback uniforms, helmet stickers, they'll be included in the game. They should be. I mean, people would riot if they weren't. I don't, this is not really news. They know this has to be in the game. We might not have as many at first, but maybe we will because this part of the article says one school provided EA Sports more than 3,500 assets to assist designers, according to correspondence obtained by 24-7 Sports via an open records request. That's a lot of assets. I hope it was the Buckeyes. Who am I kidding? I never play as the Buckeyes when I get these games. It's too damn easy. And finally, the last bullet point. Will real coaches be in the game? And then disappointing news here. Coaches have not yet been approached about utilizing their likenesses in the game. Such a move is not expected to occur until after EA Sports secures a third party to help sign players. So I don't think you're going to see coaches unless we see players. And even then, it might be after the fact. No big deal. It is cool to see the coaches. I mean, it'd be nice to see Saban over there and Ryan Day and Harbaugh eating boogers on the sidelines. That'd be great. Maybe we'll get them. You know what? Will we get refs on the field? Now, this article doesn't talk about that, but will we get refs on the field? Then I'll hit you with a little bit more disappointing news. EA Sports is also prepared to not include every scholarship player on the 85-man roster for teams. I think a lot of people expected this. Then it goes on to say, in fact, it might be impossible to secure every scholarship player's nil rights before the game's street date. And coupled with the monstrous task of building a true-to-life roster is just not logical. So what's that mean? That the developer is aiming to secure rights for enough players for a too-deep depth chart with faux players comprising the remainder of the roster. I'm okay with that at the start, to be honest with you, especially if we still have the ability to edit rosters, which we will see. Otherwise, I don't really care. I would have taken this game with completely fake rosters. No big deal to me. Because after a few years, you're turning over rosters anyway, if you're a dynasty person. So that's all the news that I got for you. A lot of it you already knew. Thanks to 24-7 Sports for putting out this article. And Brandon Marcello, happy birthday. Again, the links are in the description for the article. And if you like what I'm doing here, please drop a like on the video. It helps out a lot. Subscribe if you want to stick around. I do a lot of Dynasty stuff. I got Road to Glory stuff coming. And every time there's college football news for this game, I'm going to be on it. So you might as well subscribe to see it, especially if you're a Buckeye. Until next time, OH.